Good. I hope you hear me well. Yeah, good, good, perfect. Uh, so I will probably start with this uh, more pleasant part concerning glass art, and then we will talk a little bit about nowadays situation in our country. Uh, well, actually, glass making in Ukraine has been one of the most traditional crafts over 1000 years, especially in Western Ukraine, where I come from. Uh, the first known glass factories were recorded here at the beginning of the 11th century, uh, but their most significant development occurred in the second half of the 20th century. Only in Lviv region at the end of the 90s, uh, where there are over 80 glass factories, of which about 10 made glass art. This peak contributes simultaneously to the rapid spread of the studio movement, which began in the late 70s not long after the emerging in the United States and Europe. However, it should be noted that at that time, Soviet artists uh, were isolated entirely from receiving information outside the Iron Curtain. Ukrainian artist Andriy Bukote, yeah, ah, sorry, it would be much easier. Uh, Ukrainian artist Andriy Bukote, actually my father, uh, pioneered Soviet glass making then over time fascination with technological oh, and uh, plastic researchers grew into a series of authors positions first exhibited in glass space image exhibition project in Moscow in 1981 with four yeah. other yeah. during the 90s tense Andriy Bokote works developed into sculptural compositions and fine art plates. Uh, these pieces are made using the technique of rolling glass through metal rollers, as uh, stained glass or fusing glass is made. After rolling, the hot plates are formed live. This operation is very similar to the work of surgeons in gloves with readers. In other direction, abstract la landscapes are also formed in a hot stage. Uh, the decor is applied to the court work piece. Uh, it's not painted on the surface. Uh, the diameter is approximately 70 centimeters, uh, and the wedge is about uh, seven, eight kilos. Oh. In uh, recent years, Andriy Bocote has performed more monumental sculptural compositions. The first was Last Supper of uh, 2018, in which the 12 apostles and the central figure of Jesus Christ were made using the same technique according to the modular principle. The composition width is around seven meters. Uh, the next version of the Last Supper was created using the combined bone glass and kiln forming technique in 2021, and it is exhibited in a sculptural art near the beach. Uh, another work was installed in Wuxi, China, in a newly established glass museum. It is Terracotta Army. Uh, in this case, the figure of the horse is almost life-size. And the soldiers are like two meters tall. The work is also done in a combined technique and the elements are subsequently fastened with screws. It took approximately half a year to uh, complete such a composition, including all the sketching work and the execution of all life-size wooden form of the horse uh, on which individual layers were molded by holes. Uh, now several slides will feature the works of other modern Lviv artists of different generations. We prepare this catalog for one of the projects we had already implemented with our American colleagues during the war. Quite by chance, one of the visitors to the Glass Museum in Lviv, who was a great fan of glass art, suggested that he would like to do something valuable and uh, helpful for us. Since his close friends 
were the owners of one of the big, biggest auction houses in the USA, the Rago Auction House. During the last few months of uh, 2022, we were preparing an auction called Unbreakable Ukraine with the participation of 11 Ukrainian glass artists. The funds from the sale were uh, directed to developing artists' creativity during the war. And the auction house ultimately refused the profits. Uh, this charitable event grew into the next project, this time uh, with the participation of the international community of glass artists. Uh, the initiative of the famous Dutch artist Peter Bremers, uh, 13 artists from the USA, the Netherlands, uh, Germany, Great Britain, the Czech Republic, and Spain donated their works. The funds received from the auction were directed to creating a new blown glass workshop for our glass department. The Slovenian manufacturer will complete our new electric furnace and deliver it to Ukraine in a few weeks. We plan to start working on the fully reconstructed hot shop in September at the beginning of the next academic year. So now a few words about our academy and the glass department. The Art Industrial School in Lviv was established in 1876 in the building that has survived to this day, and it is where the Academy's administration is located. Officially, as an institution of higher education, the Academy was formed in 1946 as the State Institute of Decorative and Applied Arts. Then it was renamed uh, the Lviv Academy of Arts and then the Lviv National Academy of Arts. Today, the Academy has over 1,000 students, more than uh, 200 teachers and 200 administrative and uh, technical staff. The Academy has two galleries where students can realize their creative projects. Here uh, with exhibitions, we also invite graduates from, uh, who graduated from the Academy uh, no more than five years ago. Uh, training at the Academy takes place at three levels of education, BA, MA, PhD, or Doctor of Arts. Students have the opportunity to study 16 educational programs at four faculties. As you see, it's quite similar to construct. Uh, now I'd like to say a few words about the glass department <clears throat> and the projects we are organizing to support development of Ukrainian glass making. So the Department of Glass Art was founded in 1961. Almost from its very beginning, a hot shop was created in 1964, which uh, became the basis of all training programs. During Soviet times, while the glass industry was functioning, the program was dominated by product designers. But with gradual closure of enterprises and the spread of the studio movement, tasks were reoriented entirely to the author's work, to the studio glass. Of course, this has both pluses and minuses because if our glass industry recovers one day, we will lack designers who will have to be important from abroad. Today in the first two courses, we try to acquaint students with all available techniques so that from the third year of study, at the bachelor's level, they can choose a direction, applied glass or studio glass. We also have a minor program at the department for students of other educational programs, where they can complete 18 credits in the third and fourth years of, of study. Our curriculum includes many fundamental disciplines like uh, drawing, painting, and sculpture, allowing our graduates to work in other media after graduating from the academy. We also pay a lot of attention to computer 3D modeling. Thanks to this, we didn't have so many problems with remote work and the diploma depends during COVID time. We also understand how important new trends in art are today. So among the disciplines are conceptual practices of modern art, where the students perform video art, installations, performances, and other conceptual projects. We have our own gallery space where semester exams, some authors' projects of students and exhibition, exhibitions within the framework of 
our general projects take place. In addition to the furnace, we have a cold treatment workshop, stained glass and painting workshop, a kiln forming studio. As I already emphasized, the, uh, we are working on completely reconstructing our hot shop today because the last furnace was rather old fashioned. Besides, it was a bit gas fired, so it's very expensive now. Then we have to turn to the electricity. Now we have created several projects to support our students um, and stimulate their creativity. The annual Andriy Bokote Award for Young Glass Artists is aimed at artists under 40 and was established in 2018. The first winners participated in a two-week conference in China and last year winner was awarded with participation in the almost two months two months emerging artists in residency in Belch at Glasgow. Uh, we are really very grateful to Belch for this unique opportunity. The next project is European Glass Education Residence created for the joint work of teachers and students from various European schools. We planned it before COVID, but uh, we had to change the format to a remote one. So only our students worked in our workshops while foreign guests, teachers and students from Poland, Turkey, Slovakia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Hungary made presentations online. Our most significant and vital project is International Blown Glass Symposium in Lviv, and I would like to tell you a little bit more about this event. So the first symposium was organized by Andriy Bukote in 1989, after, the participa after he participated in a large-scale meeting of artists worldwide in Novi Bor, Czechoslovakia in 1988. Our first symposium was considered all union, Although already Dan Margin Yukovsky from the USA, Yiri Shohai from Czech Republic, Nico Meritario from Finland, and Janusz Jegenisch from Hungary took part. The symposium traditionally takes place every three years, and 12 meetings have been held. More than 270 artists from 32 countries took part in all symposia. Here we have guest uh, Ines Ljunggren from Sweden as well. She took part in 2016 in our symposium. Uh, artists work at the furnace and the created works are exhibited at the final exhibition. The collection includes more than 300 authors and positions and uh, is kept in funds of National Museum in Lviv and the Glass Museum in Lviv. Uh, we have really good collection to tell the truth of quite prominent artists, glass artists like Marvin Lipovsky, Jan Zorichov, and so on. Well, and now this new picture is of our glass museum interior. And uh, now let me tell a little bit about the first weeks of the war, which came completely unexpectedly for us. Uh, we were all in shock, actually, for the first few days and uh, didn't know what to do, where to go, realizing that we are uh, the safest in Western Ukraine and that even several weeks may pass before the Russians will reach us. I immediately called my friends from Kharkiv and uh, invited them to come because I realized that it's, they are some 50 kilometers from the Russian border and, and, and they could had a huge problem. So they uh, took the cat, their cat and camera, because there are uh, some cinematographists. And it takes five days for them to come to Lviv. It's like a thousand kilometers, but still they, they, they went for five days. Uh, after the first days of shock, everyone tried to do something, something necessary, something to help. Someone stood at the checkpoints in every even miniature village, uh, checking all the cars. Uh, someone was cooking food for those who came, uh, met at the railway station and, and took home people who went to the station. There were thousands of, of refugees that time. Our students and employees learned to react in critical situations, made anti-tank obstacles, 
weaving masking nests. All of the academy was just covered with these nests and some ladies from the neighborhood still uh, do it today. We prepared a lot of rooms for refugees and collected things for some people came as daily homes. Some workshops were held for children uh, to keep them occupied because they were tired and boring. Uh, <clears throat> yes, at one time we had a lot of dogs, cats, birds, and even snake that ex escaped one day from the terrarium in dormitory. Well, we were exhausted and scared, but we kept a good state of mind and did everything we could do at that time to help. Uh, these are our photos from sh the shelter. Uh, we are already used to bomb attacks and to bomb alarms, and, and, and now they cause us nothing but anger. But uh, that time, uh, they caused great fear, and we didn't know what to expect. In addition, in even our shelters were not ready. Uh, they were often abandoned and stuck with some garbage. <laughs> Such a funny story because uh, literally the first day of, of the of war, mm, our class friend from Bulgaria, Elizar uh, Milev, uh, called me or texted me. Well, he was preparing some symposium in, in the nearest weeks, and and he was so excited. Uh, he he just texted me, "Oh, Michael, I have so many meetings. We are going to prepare so good, uh, so good symposium. Just call me when you." Will had time. And I answered him, oh, sure, but uh, we are preparing our bomb shelter now. And his answer was, ah, take your time. After one hour or two hours, he called me, Michael, I'm so sorry, I just read the news. Um, so in this photo, uh, we have a meeting in Vector's office about how we should organize the transfer of our students abroad. On the one hand, help them leave Ukraine, and on the other hand, free up a place in the dormitory for students of the academies from Kyiv and Kharkiv uh, who kept arriving in life. Over two weeks, first we located all our students who already left the country with their parents, and uh, we are trying to manage their study in the countries of residence. Then we sent three buses of female students from Ukraine with us men were not allowed to leave the country. A total of uh, 207 academy students were placed on academic exchange programs at 29 institutions in 13 countries, including Pons, for which we are also sincerely, sincerely thank you. Uh, well, now let me say a few words about the main reason for all this happening. Because despite the vast amount of, of information that is on all the news about Ukraine today, hardly anyone talks about the root cause of Russian aggression, which is far from the first in our history. This map shows the territory of Kiev and Rus during its most flourishing period in the 9th, 13th century. Our country was then formed, which later received the name Ukraine, because the original name, Roots, was stolen and changed to Russia. As early as the 18th century, when the foundations of today's cartography were laid. As you can see, all lands on the right side is the modern territory of Russia. Instead, Kiev and Rus in, is in the place of present day Ukraine and Belarus. By the way our first princess were Vikings. So we have the same national colors, but we have also the same genes. Uh, on this slide, I selected from an extensive list of the most significant military conflicts that Russians committed against the Ukrainians during the 12th and 21st century. So as you can see, today's war is far from the first. And when someone tells you that Putin is to blame for everything, don't believe it. Before and after him, there will be hundreds of 
Russians who will try to erase Ukraine from the world. We are not talking about military conflicts. For centuries, the Russians destroyed our culture and stole our figures. Gogol, Rebin, Malevich, Ivazovsky, and Dardeno parts. The world know them as great Russian artists, writers, and musicians, but they were born in Ukraine and depicted Ukraine and Ukrainians in their way. But now, thanks to Putin, the whole world will learn the truth today. Then I wanted to choose from the list of how many times the Russians banned the Ukrainian language. Uh, but the listing all in one PowerPoint slides was unreal, so I decided just to place print screens from Wikipedia. This slide shows the number of victims of the Russian communist regime, which took the lives of 10 million Ukrainians in just 40 years. The greatest tragedy of this period was the Holodomor, the genocide of Ukrainian people, during which up to 7 million Ukrainians died of hunger. Now the map shows how the population of certain regions has indeed decreased in two years. More than 25% of the population was destroyed in the most fertile lands of central and eastern Ukraine, which are marked in red. In their place, the most meritorious communists from deep Russia were brought in, so no one should be surprised that today so many Ukrainians from the East speak Russian. On this slide, I have noted the dates uh, that I'm currently here in Sweden and how many missiles and drones have been launched on my land each day, included me and my home. These photos were taken two days ago from the Kyiv Academy of Applied and Decorative Arts. Fortunately, no one was hurt because it was uh, a sports hall. This is the result of the fall of the remains of the downed missile by our airplanes. We can imagine what it would look like if the missiles hit the target. Now I want to show a short film uh, prepared by the National Academy of Arts of Ukraine for the presentation я Сергій Михальчук, по професії кінооператор гравого кіно. Мені прийшло повідомлення, що організовується кіногрупа, яка буде працювати під час війни. Скажімо так, більшість солдатів, які зараз на війні, по-справжньому вони стали солдатами і військовими на війні. Розумію, що найбільше я можу принести в цій війні це за допомогою своєї професії. Ми стали солдатами не для, ну я, власне, про свою позицію. Навіть не для того, щоб вбити ворога. Я не думаю, що навіть якщо мене добре навчити, що я буду робити це краще інших. А для того, щоб бути рядом з тими, хто це робить. З тими, хто реально захищає. І ми можемо показати те, чого не може показати сам солдат за допомогою свого мобільного телефона. І ми можемо те зробити, що цю історію і цю війну запам'ятають. Колись бабуся запитав, бабусю, а скільки люди живуть там? Чекай 100 років. Я заплакав. Боже, мені залишилось жити там 94 роки. Розумієте, там вже скільки став. Ну, бо а мені вже 6. Ну, я там, а скільки там тоді там? Ну, там, ой, Боже, 94, я плаку. А де бабуся каже, дитинко, та це ж ти ще, тобі ще набридне. Ти буде, тобто, це, ну, це такі наївності. Тобто, але зараз справді такий момент, що ти особливо цінуєш кожну мить життя. Кожну зустріч з другом, кожне откровення, кожен натх... момент натхнення, кожне спілкування, кожну мить радості, кожну... кожен поцілунок і кожну мить любові.
Чи можуть росіяни чи москалі обійтися без України в контексті своєї імперії без нас, без Київської спадщини в цьому історичному дискурсі? Легітимність своїх якихось імперських амбіцій вони шукають в далекому історичному минулому яке щось фальшове. Кожен народ, кожна нація, ми створені Богом для чого? Для того, щоб творчий потенціал нашої нації був вільним і прислужився для того, щоб земля стала кращою. То в нас це оцей дух пробуджений, і він, цей дух готовий піти на, на будь-які жертви, аби бути вільним. Ми маємо вистояти в цій боротьбі для того, щоб реалізувати той Божий задум, бути вільними, щоб творити. Коли, наприклад, перший раз ти там бачиш свою світлину на сайті New York Times, думаєш, ого. І вже потім, коли дивишся ці фотографії, думаєш, мабуть, щось не те я роблю зі своїм життям по життю. Я розумію, що кращі свої знімки ми зняли зараз, за рік війни. Якби мені сказали, що мене ніколи не опублікує New York Times, я б з радістю погодилась. Бо це не, не ті знімки, які ти хочеш робити. Це таке, знаєте, дивне відчуття. З одного боку, так, тобі приємно, з іншого боку, ти розумієш, через які події ти тут опинився. Ти розумієш, що ну, просто краще б нічого, не було, нічого цього не було. Ні, ніяких New York Times, ніяких е, е, медіа і, і, і ніякої війни. Чи культура зброї? Звісно. Про що тут говорити? Якщо твоє мистецтво вні політики, то це не мистецтво. Це якесь ремесло, щось рутинне, щось однотипне, щось там полоне. Тобто, як виходить, що там відбуваються такі події, а і це не відображено в твоєму мистецтві, значить ти не можеш називати себе митцем, бо це зовсім інші речі. Для дуже багатьох українців стало шоком, стало ну, цілковитою несподіванкою те, якою є Росія насправді. Себто це ж йдеться не лише про Володимира Володимировича Путіна, та, чи там, скажімо, міністр Шойгу, чи міністра Лаврова, а йдеться про російське суспільство. Тому що е, людей Бучів, Гостомелі, Іркені галтували, катували і грабували не Путін Шойгу. Це робили молоді російські хлопці. Поруч із нами знаходиться і існує суспільство, суспільство військових злочинців, мародерів, галтівників і вбивців. І це якось ну, важко назвати інакше. Тобто можна, звичайно, користуватися там російськими пропагандистськими кліше, але ж ми бачимо це на власні очі. І це якось важко, важко пояснити і насправді важко прийняти. Тому що ну, ти до останнього навіть ворогові намагаєшся бачити людину. Ти до останнього ну, намагаєшся, намагаєшся бачити в чужому своє відзеркалення. Ти думаєш, якщо я не хочу тобі зла, чому ти хочеш зла мені? Якщо я не хочу тебе вбити, чому ти хочеш вбити мене? Якщо я не хочу забрати твоє, ну, ну чому ти хочеш забрати моє? А, це, ну, ти до останнього цьому опираєшся, тому що ну, так влаштована нормальна людська психіка. Безперечно, те, що між нами відбувається, це війна культур, це війна, війна цінностей, це війна в різних реальностях. We live in Western Ukraine, and fortunately our land is relatively peaceful. <clears throat> they say that Putin didn't even plan to occupy Western Ukraine because it wouldn't be able to pacify us anyway. He planned to divide us between Poland, Hungary, and Romania. <clears throat> But the most tremendous suffering comes from visiting hospitals. So, 
where you see hundreds of young men without hands and legs, or cemeteries, each flag is a fallen hero. And this picture is from my city. Each city, even each smallest village has such cemetery. Thank you for your attention and for your support.